In this video today, we're gonna create a camera that's gonna follow the player, and we're gonna follow the player in two ways. We're gonna have the classic uh, camera following the player all along uh, his journey into the games, and we're gonna also have a sort of more retro-like uh, camera that can pan from one level to another. And we're gonna do that through codes, and we're also gonna create a state machine for our camera that we're gonna be able to trigger into the inspector. So let's get started. So in this video, we're going to create two types of camera. We're going to have a camera that can pan, which means that if, for example, the player goes to the right, you will be able to go to the right until a certain limit, and then the camera will move automatically to the next uh, level, and it will do the same thing to when uh, the, the player will go to the left. And we're also going to have a, a camera that can actually follow the player uh, with also certain limits. So the first thing that you often see on tutorial is this way. Uh, you take the camera, you nest it into the player, and then now the camera moves. Uh, okay, that's that's one way to do things, but I'm not a big fan of it because uh, maybe in your game you want to be able to control a little bit better your camera, and that's not automatically the best way to do so. Uh, so me, what I like to do on average is like I just like uh, I like to have my my camera that is. Uh, separated uh, from my player and I like to have a script that is um, handling certain control uh, related to the position of the player. So for that you need to click on your camera and on the camera we're gonna first create a script. So I'm gonna uh, click on the script icon, I'm gonna put that script into my script folder and inside the script folder I'm gonna create a new, uh, a new folder that I'm gonna call control like this and I'm gonna uh, put that camera yeah, that camera script, I'm going to put it here and I'm just going to rename it camera, like that. Click on create, and so now we are good. So we're going to start first with the camera panning. So what I'm going to do is like I'm going to create a function, and the function I'm going to call it camera panning, and uh, here for now I'm going to pass. What I need to do first is I need to get a reference to my player. So what I'm going to do is like I'm going to just go here at the top, and I'm going to do something like at onready var, and here I'm going to call that variable player and I'm going to set it to be equal to the position of my player. So what I'm going to do is like I'm going to click and drag my player here. So like this, Godot know where, which nodes to look at, basically. Now that we have created that, we need to do certain things. Uh, we need to first make sure that we have a certain margin of the game that is set. We need to be able to move the camera from one point to another point, and we need to be able to have a transition from that point to the other point. So the first thing we need to do here is first we need to understand how the, uh, the transform of our level works. If I'm clicking on my level one here, you can see that the transform point is right here. So the way that my, uh, my game is set up right now is not good. So what I need to do here is I need to take my camera up to my crate. So for that, I'm clicking on my camera, then I'm holding shift and I'm clicking on the crate. And then I'm uh, on the move mode here. I'm moving all of this around here, for example, something like this. I think that will be all right. Uh, and so now that I've done that, my camera 2D need to have another thing set, which is here, there's something that is called anchor mode. You can see here at the moment it is on drag center, which means that the uh, um, the transform of my camera is right here, but when you want to use the camera panning, I've noticed that fixed top left is way better, and so it put it at the top left of our camera. So now what I, what I can do is like I can take my camera and I can move it like this, for example, and let's see how it looks like. I'm gonna just put it like this, I'm gonna launch the game, and for now, let's see. Nothing has changed that much, so that's good. So now what we can do is we can use that uh, to actually move the camera. And so what we're going to do is like, we're going to move that point from where it is right now, which is like uh, that position here, and we're going to move it to like, for example, 320. That's what we're going to do. Uh, but what is even better is that here you can see the position is at 88 and 64, which is not good. It's going to create some problems. So here what I can do is I can, I can reselect all of this and just put it exactly where the transform of my uh, level is so right now. My level one is here, my camera is here, position is at zero, that's perfect. If I launch my camera, everything is good. So now that we have done that, we can uh, go back to the camera and here I can start to code the actual code. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is like I'm gonna get the position of my camera. So here the position, I'm gonna set it to be equal to the player dot uh, position, something like this. Then here, what I need to do is I need to create the framing of my camera. So for that, I need to create two variables, var x 
and here I need to create another variable var y. This is gonna be for the x axis and the y axis. So here the, the x axis I'm gonna set it to be equal to floor, which is a built in uh, function in Godot. I'm gonna show you in help. You go to help, search help, and here we're gonna take a look at floor and uh, on the vector 2. And so this return a new vector with all components rounded down. So for example, uh, if you make uh, a calculation, uh, if the result is 1.2, it's going to run it down to 1. That's basically what it does. And this is very useful because here we're going to make a little modulo where we're just going to say that we're going to take the position dot x and we're going to divide it by 320. 320 here uh, is a, a reference to my pixel art, which is on average 320 pixel by 180. And here I'm going to uh, um, multiply, sorry, by 320. Like this. And I'm going to do the same for the y axis. I'm going to say floor position.y. And here I'm going to also divide it by 180 this time. And then I'm going to multiply it by 180. So this makes sure that it can calculate, uh, it, can, it can create a, a grid around our camera. Uh, and then when that limit is set, we're going to be able to toggle the behavior from the camera. That's basically what we are doing here. So now what we can do is like we can say that the position of our camera is equal to the vector 2. Vector 2, and here we can pass x and y in the, um, in the parentheses. So now that we have done that, let's have a look. I'm gonna put my camera panning here. I'm gonna take it, and I'm gonna put it into my process delta function of my camera. So let's have a look now. I'm gonna launch the game. So I am here, and what happens if I go to the right? You can see that the camera now is moving. And if I go back here, you can see that the camera now is moving also to the other side. So that's perfect. We have a beginning of like a, a movement that is interesting. Now what I would like to do is instead of having the transition being instant, I would like to have a sort of a, a little movement that goes either to the left, to the right, up or down. For that, we do, we're going to use what is called a twin. A twin is an inter, uh, a linear interpolation. Basically, it takes uh, two parameters, let's say a parameter A and a parameter B, and it uh, interpolates the distance be between those two parameters. That's basically what it does. And for creating a twin in Godot, what you need to do is first creating a variable. So here I'm going to call it twin, and I'm going to set it to be equal to create twin, like this. And then that twin is going to be in need to have uh, two parameters. We're going to be in need to be uh, uh, setting a trend and setting an ease. The trend is basically um, a movement curve. Here, what we're going to do is like I'm going to set the trends to be at a twin dot trends cubic. So this one here. And then here I'm going to set the ease to be uh, equal to a twin with capital T. And here it's going to be ease in app. So this is going to apply a certain... Um, a certain curve in the movement and uh, this one gonna apply something at the beginning and at the end of it so that's basically what we do here so now what i'm gonna do is like i'm gonna take my twin and here i'm gonna do dot twin underscore property and here between parentheses i'm gonna apply it on itself i'm gonna uh, say to the uh, twin property to look at what's in position and then we're gonna take the vector 2 for x and y and then we're gonna apply out of the parentheses, we're going to apply a sort of speed of the transition. So now let's have a look. I'm coming here, I'm launching the game, and so if I go to the right, the camera is going to pan slowly to the, to the right. That's perfect. And what happens if I go to the top? I'm going to come here. So remember that in my uh, video jump, I set the jump to be like at my max jump at 4. So here I'm going to jump, and you can see that now I can pass here like that, and it follows also uh, my player like this. So that's perfect. So we have the beginning of a camera panning that is working. So that's good. My camera, <laughs> my player has full completely out of uh, camera. So that's that. So now what, what I want to do is I want to create another type of camera, which is going to be my follow camera. So my camera, follow camera, I'm going to create a function and I'm going to call it follow underscore camera or camera follow actually. Uh, I can also do it like this to keep the same uh, same type of uh, uh, naming system that I've put into place. And here what I can do is like I can set that uh, camera follow to be my the, the position to be equal to the player dot position. That's it. And so with that done, now for example, here instead of camera panning, I can just do my camera follow. 
and it's gonna follow my player but we're gonna have some problems i'm gonna show you voila one of the problem is this one uh the um the camera 2d is still set in fixed top left which is not something that is good for that type of camera so here what we need to do before to make our to assign the position of our camera to the position the player position we need to set the anchor mode yeah, remember that in Godot, everything that is in the inspector, you can uh, you can access it through code. So here, if you over it, you can see property anchor mode. So here on my camera follow, what I can do is like I can come here and I can say anchor mode, anchor mode, sorry, anchor mode, like that. I can set it to be equal to camera 2D. And here you can see it uh, proposes me anchor mode drag center or fixed top left. So me, I need to be here on drag center. So now let's have a look. I come here now my camera is at the center and i can move around perfect but you can see here we have some issue that we're gonna solve that right now uh, we have every time we jump it follow the camera it follow the player at each pose at each point each single pixel of the of his movement basically like every time we jump it follow each pixel on the uh, on the y-axis which is not something that i want and that's something that is good in godot like you can go to camera here you have drag and here you have those two uh, those two elements here horizontal drag horizontal enable vertical enable this is basically fixing a certain amount of limit here you can see for example we have left margin top margin right margin bottom margin and they all have that own number of 0 0.2 this is the percentage of uh, the space that you're in and basically if you're getting um, close to here for example uh, then the camera gonna move so i'm gonna show you for example i'm gonna go to right margin and i'm gonna put it at dot five so 50 percent so it means that the camera gonna move when the player gonna be around here so i'm launching the game so you see the player is right here now but if i put that at 0 0.2 and i come back here the player is more in the center so this is something that uh, you can play with to find like the right uh, the right movement me what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna also uh i'm gonna set the i think the top margin i'm gonna set it to be equal to dot five let's have a look i'm gonna launch so like this if i if i if i jump it doesn't follow my my player up to the to the max you can see that right now it's better like this so voila uh, but I think I can put it at dot four actually. I can't remember how much I've put it on my test project. Uh, so, but yeah, I'm gonna put it at dot four. Uh, now, what we need also to do is like uh, when I start the game, I don't want to see that portion of the screen here. So I need to see, fix some limit. And you have something in um, in Godot that is called limit in the camera 2D. You have limit here. So here, what we need to do is first we need to go to editor, and here we need to click on draw limit and draw margin. Uh, draw margin, you, may use, you can see that it uh, shows that uh, little uh, things here, which is the margin that we are using in our, uh, in our editor right here. For example, if I toggle this one more, you can see that the little cube is moving even more like this, like that. I'm going to leave it like this. This one is making it a bit bigger like this, for example. And this one here is also making it a little bit bigger. So now if I launch back my camera, you're going to see that it's going to change a bit the proportion of what we are seeing. So me, I'm going to keep for the right and the left, I'm going to keep it at dot two, and I'm going to keep the top margin at dot four. Uh, and now what I want to do is I want to just like go to my limit. So here, limit, and I want to set it up. So here you can see it's massive uh, amount of numbers. So if I go, for example, to the left here, I want to put it at zero. So now if I launch back the game, let's see what it does. It set the limit at zero. And if I go here, you can see that I can't move anymore. So that's perfect. Uh, and I also want to, uh, for example, maybe put it a little bit more here. So for that, I need to maybe do something like minus 32. Let's see. Yeah, you can see that now the uh, limit of my of my camera, which is the yellow line here, is showing up right there. So what I can do is like I can just do minus 28 or maybe even minus 24. Voila. This is where I'm going to set the margin like this and so now for example i can have my camera follow my player like this and so now i can for example jump etc i can do a lot of things like this okay so now i want to show you one last thing which is like right now we have created two type of camera but uh what if we want to toggle them differently than just like uh, having to go into the script and changing what's uh, what's in the process delta we can actually do that and what we're going to do 
is we're gonna uh, we have our camera panning and our camera follow and those things can be considered as a state and so what we're gonna be in need to do here is to use those state and toggle them through a state machine before to do that i'm gonna do something here i'm gonna just go to my camera panning and i'm gonna make sure at the beginning that the anchor mode is set on camera 2d that fixed top left the one that we have set per default right here which is fixed top left i just want to make sure because like that when we're gonna um, toggle our camera follow we can make sure that it's on the right anchor mode and now that we have created that what we can do is like i can go at the top here and I can create an enum and that enum I'm gonna call it camera underscore state and I'm gonna set it to be equal to two state follow between curly bracket uh, follow and then panning now that I've created that what I can do is add just on top I'm gonna create an export and I'm gonna call it camera and I'm gonna set it to be equal to the camera state here like that and so now if i go back to my camera 2d you can see that i have my camera here and i have exported my enumerator and here i can choose which one i want so now the only thing that i need to do is in the process delta instead of having one of the two uh, name of my uh, state of camera right written here what i can do is like i can create a match and i can match my camera and here i can say that if my camera state is to be set on follow then what i can do is i can indicate to godot to take a look at camera underscore follow and if the camera state is set to be on panning then i can set uh, i can say to godot take a look at camera panning and so now depending which uh, which camera i'm selecting into the inspector so for example right now i am on follow it's gonna follow my player like this as you can see and I can come here and the camera is following the player nicely and if I choose for example panning and I go back to my camera it's gonna pan like this as you can see like and I can come here for example and I can jump, just jump like this and I have my two state and now maybe in your uh, in your level in your future level you're gonna be sometime in need to have that camera panning that is showing and then you're gonna enter into an area where you can for example trigger the camera follow and that will be something that you will be able to do easily uh, in the in the, the code of your game and that's probably something that i'm going to show you in the future how to do but basically here you already have the basic for that and you can for example create another state where you can zoom you can have access to the zoom of your camera into like the zoom uh, property and so on and so on but me basically this is how i'm creating my uh, camera for my game because like this i can make sure that i can have uh, the uh, the camera behavior that i want to have so that's it for me. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it's the case, don't hesitate to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Me, I want to thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.